Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, um, I, uh, as you all know, I don't really, well, maybe you don't know, but I don't really use all this. So, um, I have some questions along the way and I didn't push the questions, but I, I have them in the slide. This is just my local, um, my local version of the slide. So you can see there's all these questions in there. Um, but anyway, so today we're talking about expressions and a lot of what we're going to talk about today is stuff that we sort of saw last time. So I don't think there's anything like super new um, to the work, but but it's kind of digging down a little bit more into some of the stuff that we saw last week. Okay, um, so uh, the first thing is to understand kind of the structure and the language and whatnot, um, and kind of the understanding of what is an expression. And, you know, we talked about this last time, but the idea that like, um, you know, if you don't have an X, then you can't, you know, write this command, but that you can hold the command as an expression. So, you know, you, you don't have an X, so you're not doing anything, you're not running it, you're not evaluating it, but you're, um, but you're just kind of holding this idea of the, of the commands or of whatever it is that you want. Um, and then, you know, you can evaluate that, um, Olivier, today, this morning, after you wrote yesterday, you wrote something about, you know, the book club meeting and you use the word expression. I was like, wait a second. Now I have to like rethink what's the difference between EXPR and expression and whatever. And then I realized that was like the last chapter. Yeah, and so that's maybe the last. I didn't, uh, and really... I said, do not use it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, okay. So. Just, yeah. And actually, ahead. this is the problem with patchwork. If you use expression with patchwork, um, it doesn't collect axes as much. So you have to use B quote instead. Okay, nice, nice. Um, okay, so here's my first note, right? Okay, so the person who did these slides, which I'm very appreciative of. So so any questions I have about their slides is, is meant to be, you know, um, not a criticism. So the person who wrote it says, we can write multiple expressions at once and it acts similar. Um, but I wasn't sure what it means. Does it mean expression? I think so, the idea is that, yeah, I think they mean expression. I think the idea would be like, it's like a collection of, of lines of code, which would be similar to running source. It is my interpretation. Yes, source are not a source. I think a function will be evaluated. Like the function will not like run, but at least the function will return like, uh, it will be, I mean, at least the function generating the function will be evaluated. You know, like the, the assignment to an object function name, let's say like you have Bob uh, equal one, two, three. I mean, equal combine uh, concatenate one, two, three, and you run source. At least the assignment function will run and then you will have a Bob into your global environment. Right. So I don't know what exactly I can't tell you on that. I don't understand that. Also. Looking at this <laughs> documentation, it looks like there's an expressions argument that maybe that's relevant. I, I see. So, so. Can I source this? Mm, can you source this? I guess no, I, I could try it. So. Hold on. Yeah. I, I'm going to um, try it so at the same time. Good. I mean, no, I think you can't have a comma in the middle of it. It would have to have a, a semicolon. Right. Between yeah. Two. Right, 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 right. Um, to, I mean, I, I interpreted the source as the eval, right? Source is equivalent yeah. to, so express, the, the expression part and the part in that is the equivalent to your R script and the eval is equivalent to source would be how I would think about it. Got it. But I don't think that works either, does it? Can you source this? No, it's just it's just a an idea. Well, it's, it's just yeah, it's like an equivalent, I think. Yeah. Yes, I don't but think. I know, it's... Yeah, I think source has to run on the on file. Is it uh, on files? Yeah. It might well, have it's, meant that it's source like has it's... to run on file. They might have meant oh, more that's that not. you can use source inside of the chunk of the magda. Uh, yeah. Did I did I do that wrong? No, no, you need to have a file somewhere. Yeah, that has to be a path. The but you can do file. You path. can you can use you can use a, path, uh, a fake file. Um, 
You can use, uh, um, according to the documentation, you can use instead of um, the, the default argument or the first argument is file, but you can also specify expr, so like E-X-P-R-S. Oh, you can source an expression. Equals true? Oh. E-R-S. No, equals the expression, I think, if I'm reading it correctly. In quotes? Uh, like, that's an expression, so it m might have to be. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, may, may, maybe inside of expression. Inside right, of right, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, we all know, uh, no worries, Joe, on that. We don't know about it. <laughs> so it Seems did something. True. So now type X and see what happens, or look at the environment. Do we have X yeah. in the environment? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> okay, there so you go. can source expression. Wow. Let's just Not only sure. file. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, thanks, Steffi, and, and thanks, Joe, for like... Uh, Okay. To look on that. Okay. So. Um, okay. So so then this person wrote this other thing that they said expression returns a vector and can be passed to eval. I get that about can be passed to eval, um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about um, this idea of returns a vector. And so I spent a little bit of time, ten minutes, you know, googling. And so you know, if you if you have this z which is expression, then um, it's it's true that it is dot vector. But yeah, Olivier. No, I say hi to her, Derek. No, it's, oh. uh, I think like the difference between expert and expression in expert will return a list and expression will return a vector. So if you look at Z, Z without evaluating it, uh, if you, if, yeah, if you go, can you go like copy past your line here? Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. I don't and uh, yeah, you need to copy past it. Uh, sure, enter. And then like, let ask Z uh, square, uh, let's subset just one, the first one. Right. And right. see what happens. Yeah. See, like it's still right on expression, but then uh, it's, it's understanding as like, um, yeah, the first element, then the second elements of a vector. So here the expression can be stored also as a vector. While if you use expert, I think you have exactly to exactly the same. Don't you have to do two though? I don't uh, that's a good question. I mean I, a pl I, plural. Yes. I think I, I think just a yeah, singular try. doesn't work, right? So yes. I think you have to plural it. Um that's a good question. And then yes, see it's a list. And if you want to index it, you need to double square because like it's on the um, first element of the list because it can be recursive. Like you could have an expression that's um, like you could have like a, some some form of recursivity with ex I don't think, for example, it's easy to have an expression with recursion with expression, the function. Uh -huh. How do you, how, how will you have a nested expression inside of it? I That's see. Nested. This allows for the the second one allows for um, yes. nested recursive functions. Yes, that's my like that's my like that's my yeah. like inside of your line seventeen. You can write expr inside of it. Right. Make, exactly. Or, 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 exactly. Or you can even like oh like now that w exists, you can probably like put it inside of it. Yeah. Just I mean, and just try it. Yeah, see, no, inside this is an expression that have two. It's a, I, I think the name is compound expression, but um, <clears throat> it doesn't, they do say that like an expression vector is just a list of expressions. Um, yeah, but not a list, it's it's like, uh, that's interesting well, though, well, because it doesn't seem to break these two apart. I was expecting it to have like you know, x times 10 and then x times four separately. Can you, can you just uh, score, like, can you, can you see the result of line, line 22, please? Just line 22, is it like? What do you want, double or single brackets? Uh, double, I mean, it will work the same here. Yeah. So That's this is this empty. one, then uh, can you do like, uh, just a single square bracket here? Uh, on it, on W, no, on um, single one? Okay. And one, sure. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. 
you have to wrap that in an eval because it's just it's an expression that just gives the expression so it, uh, it never evaluates of course. it into an expression of course right so if you want to evaluate the expression part oh my gosh that's like so many layers of difficulty for my brain um but i think you're to no no it's, it's good, not gonna do it right. no it's, it's just yeah because it's rapid you evaluate into w2 so go back to the previous version and then eval w2 Good job doing that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you if are. If it's in and, and here, there... it's just going to keep, it's just going to keep the string. Expression, so, yes. Yeah, yeah, for whatever you put in there. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Mind yeah, blown. See. This is I, way I too hard it, for me. Yeah. This is where like AST came in, I guess. And when you want to build it using call two and AST instead of what we were just done. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. They also wrote this expressions does not and has to be. <laughs> so I wasn't totally sure what that meant. Has to be used uh, in a loop. It can yeah. be used in a loop because it's a list. Is that what that means? Uh, I think no, the I think, way. I was going to say, I think what they mean is that the outcome. So what they said in the book, at least, is that the outcome of the expression command gives you this special special vector of expressions that when you run eval on it, it runs all of them at once. Whereas yep. in expressions, oh, sorry, the EXPRS function doesn't do that. So if you want to evaluate all the expressions in that list, you need to then do it in a loop. And, and by the way, like the pr line print eval one is just printing 40. It's not looping anything. It's like, you know, you are, it's not like you have a list, like it just like generate like the... Well, it's uh, looping because it's... it's oh, yeah, I didn't see the one four and, and 40. Yes, you're correct. Sorry. Yeah. So it's evaluated X and print, by the way, it's weird because it's print X. I don't know. So you're saying that if I just try to evaluate this it won't work it will just give you 40 no oh, no it just returned like the because it's uh, it's like evaluating a list right like it's not evaluating expression because expressions is a list of expressions where expression is a special item that evaluate oh, okay. to evaluate does that make sense like i think i'm curious if you um W, if you said like is list W, I think it would be true, right? Or oh, the class of the object. We can also class or type of, yes. So it's an actual list without special things, I think. It's just, so that's why when you evaluate it, it's just like evaluating any object in R, it just it's prints. Okay. That that can you can you try class on W, please, also? Yeah, it's a list, just a list. And type mm -hmm. of, no? Uh, I don't know what type of. Yeah, it's just type of, like the base. Oh, okay, sure. It's going to be the same, right? No, it, it, no, like for once, like it's- Oh, it's one word. <laughs> there we go, sorry. <laughs> just a list, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So anyway, these are these ideas of this of what is an expression and evaluating it and, and whatnot. Um, okay, and then we have trees, um, which in some ways for me, they're really, really helpful. And in some ways they're very confusing to me. Um, so <laughs> um, they have, um, so, okay, I'll try to explain them, but I'm sure you guys understand them better than I do. So, right, the, we have this function f and it has three arguments in it. It has X, which is an object or a symbol rather, um, which is like, I think the next slide or something. And then Y, which is a string and then a number, right? Yeah. And so it, it colors these things differently depending on sort of what they are. Oh, F is also a symbol because F refers to that object, which is the function. Um, and so, right, so this is F of X of Y of one. 
Um, and that, you know, there's two ways in R to, to draw these things. Um, you can draw them just as whatever, these like horizontal trees or vertical trees with this um, AST function, which is just abstract syntax tree. Okay. Um, so then we have these like, is this called recursive also when it's a different function or just, um, I don't know, F of it's G. It would have been recursive is if F was called F is inside, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Okay. But so go ahead, Sefi. It's nested, not recursive. Nested. Right, right, right. Thank you. Okay. So, right. So when it's a function that is the argument, then we sort of go down a level um, to kind of understand that you're then running another function um, and whatever. So that's just how that looks. Um, okay, so right, function composition, thank you. Uh, and you can look at them horizontally or vertically. Um, okay, and then there's this whole idea of infix. So, um, so infix just means that the function is placed in between the arguments usually. So that's, you know, we see that all the time with the assignment operator, and then there's all the mathematical, you know, objects that are mathematical functions that we're used to using. But it turns out that in R, you can always write infix um, functions as prefix functions, where prefix means that the function goes in front of the parentheses and the arguments come um, in between. Um, and so in this example here, the first function that's called is the assignment operator and the second function is the multiplication. And so there's the assignment operator and then the nested function, which is the multiplication um, gets that next level and, and whatnot. And again, you can write them horizontally or um, vertically. Um, I gotta say real quick, this like it, it was a, a little bit of an epiphany to figure out where the word infix came from and this is the point where i figured that out you have prefix you have suffix and you have infix so in between uh... the, like the before and the after uh, before i couldn't figure out where the hell this word infix came from but this to me makes more sense i Wait, was literally it... having that thought 30 seconds ago i'm so yeah. glad you did so <laughs> Wait, you... so jeffrey is this an r thing did, did hadley come up with this word or is this no. a word that exists this in the a... world this is a mad stuff. That Derek's got a comment on it. Or no, that's more the style. Yeah. Yeah. And and like the the if you if you, I will post the link like of this of this this guy teaching like in 1986. And he, he go over all of the presentation and he give very example like in math, you have a bunch of possibility to put operator and operands. And one of the funny examples I give is square roots. So in square roots, you put the X like in a very weird position. It's inside of the radical, no? Yeah. And uh, you can also put an X like if it's not a square root, it's like like, like a, a cubic root. Is it, post, is it how you call that in English? Yeah. Then you will have an X like inside of the square root. And then like on the... <laughs> so like any... You give, you give a lot of example uh, on that. And the funny example is just Liz decided to just to just be in fix point. No other way. So I, I will give you the link later if you are interested in that. But like this is like the math naming convention. But that that particular function we most we mostly made to a prefix function, right? In in computing languages. There is a double caret, which means square root. Which would be infix. Square root is a but, function because it's very complicated to to do it in 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 computers because a lot of square roots like are, you need to limit themselves. Like you know, it's it's easy on math, but it's hard on the computer because the computer need to give you an answer. So they are doing like in a, in a lot of different kind of way. But can't you but, do square? Can't you do roots with maybe it's double stars? Maybe can't you do roots as as infix? Yes. <clears throat> right? Isn't like. You know, for isn't that isn't that that's his power. You want the reverse of it. Yes, <laughs> that's a smart <laughs> way of doing it. But you can you can rewrite that as like um, le, like this this double star can be uh, in back in back um, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then you pass two arguments. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> See, I, I'm very curious, like, on uh, what's, yeah. So there's huh. probably like weird stuff going behind the scene here. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of the examples, right? Or the um, exercises. They were saying that the double star is like kind of a weird, archaic leftover or okay. linked to the carrot, but uh -huh. not really. But in list, every, in list, everything will be like that. Um, plus one, two, three. And it's going to be, you give you six. And, then, uh, and by convention, the first argument of the function, the function here is just like function is parentheses. This is a function. Okay. And uh, the first argument of the function is the operators and later is the operands. Uh -huh. And this is the same here, like the, the same structures. Like the first. Right. Um, the the first, first argument is the parentheses. Yeah, which is the no, the. Um, the first argument is like here, it's the assignment function. Oh, 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 right, right, right. Okay, okay, okay. And then you have like a second one, like, and then it decomposes like the same. And inside of it, inside of this um, abstract trees, you have a uh, y, and then you have another uh, function call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, go back. So many other things. Thanks. Okay. I, I will okay, post no. the link uh, if you are curious about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and and um, whenever we use um, these sort of standard infix functions in prefix form, R has this default to go back to the infix, uh, which has to just be. You guys can can clear, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this sort of behavior to me is all about human readability, like trying to get the human to really understand what's going on. Um, because, you know, in my head, I'm thinking if it's just about the computer, the computer would want everything in prefix form. That seems like it would just be easier to work with. Yes. And this is a good example of Lisp. Lisp is is friendlier with the computers. I mean, it's friendlier as how it's evaluated um, argument and expression, but it's less friend friendly to read and write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except if you like parentheses. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, so we have a bunch of a bunch of pieces to this whole grammar of expressions and whatnot. We have this idea of constant symbol calls and pair lists. Um, so uh, constants are just words that are um, uh, either null or length one atomic vectors, kind of scalars. So here's a bunch of examples where we have, you know, true, an integer, a decimal, or a... Is this a symbol? Is a symbol? Or no, maybe this is a character string. Okay, or it can be a character string. And we it's say like, oh yeah, they're the same. Sorry? Constant. Constant. You think about X in quotes as a constant? At least that's what I interpreted. The symbols are more like when it's like, I, I felt like that was really useful because last week I kept trying to refer to items as being quoted or unquoted. And yeah. as being like something that you would have to quote or a number or something like that versus something you wouldn't like that, a name. So if right. you're just referring to, which is an object, the name of an object, that's a symbol. And then anything else that would be like the contents of that object would be a constant. Yeah, and plus is a symbol, plus with a quote will be a constant. Yeah, because it's so, a uh, so there constant. there should be a quote on this guy, right? Yes, I think so. Okay, I'm going to go back and put one on there. Okay, <laughs> I agree. In the book that they put quotes around all the constants because otherwise they look like symbols. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, okay, and then the symbol to me in, in my head as I'm reading this, I'm just thinking about my environment. Like that's what I that's what is the easiest thing for me is just like okay if it, if it's if it's listed over there in my environment it's a symbol you know and that's like a data set or a function or I mean I know not all functions are listed in my environment and stuff but it's like the name of the thing and um and that Hadley doesn't use the word name because name means too many other things which makes a lot of sense um okay so um. And and you can turn um, you can turn a string into a symbol by using the sim command, 
Um, and you can turn a symbol back into a string by using as character and whatnot. Um, and, and this is what Steffi just said. And I, I think that's a good, a good way to be clear about things um, that depending on whether it's printed with quotes or not. So it's a symbol if it's no quotes and it's a constant, although I still, I, I'm, I'm okay with the difference between symbol and um, constant, but I, I think of the constant as a string as opposed to like mathematically, like it would be like the number 47. Well, I think the, but, the, the constants can be strings or numerics, or it's basically like your, your base types are, are, are what your constants can be, right? Like all, they can be a logical, they can be a string, they can be a numeric, right. they can be a double. So maybe in this example, it would be better to say something like hello in quotes. You know what I mean? Like for me, that's a little bit more clear yeah, but, rather than but, this idea of but X. I think the point is it wants to show the difference between X as a symbol and X as a character string. Right? Yeah, like okay. X yeah, I hear you. Of those. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense to be clear about mm -hmm. when you're doing which kind. Yeah, okay. Okay, good point. Okay, um, symbol is always length one, um, but you can have... Um, you can have uh, um, lists of symbols if you want. Um, notice that um, if you if you have an expression which is um, just on a symbol, then um, how do I say this? Uh, so so. Um, this idea of, of an expression being a symbol really um, is about, it's about the expression sort of kind of pulling out the roots of that symbol. It's not about the expression being like an expression command because of course this makes sense. Like if you just do an expression on any generic expression out there, Right. If it's a if it's a you know if it's a whole function call or if it's whatever that doesn't necessarily make it um, a string. Um, I guess I didn't have this up here, but previously you can you can change and I, I should have had that on here. Like like this is what I meant to do up here. Sorry. Um, I added this because I was just like clarifying it in my head. Like that works. Um, and maybe this is like totally obvious and I didn't need to do it, but like just kind of clarifying in my head what was happening, that doesn't work, right? Because, because this expression is like, again, pulling out the fact that this is a symbol and this expression down here, the second one is like holding a function call or it's holding a an act that I might do later when I want to add X and Y together. And so that's not a string. It just can't be a string. So if you put the X plus Y in quotes, would that, that, would that just like that? Yeah. That work? yeah. Joe, that was really good. I'm really glad you mentioned that. Cause I think there was a couple of times where they talked about the length of one and I would, and they're like, Oh, but the, you can't have more than one. And I was like, why not? But they're like, because anytime you add something more than one, it becomes a function call. And I was like, it does. And I was like, it, it, it kind of said, okay. Yeah, so yeah. That out, it made perfect sense. So that was, I didn't, I did not make that connection here. I just thought. <laughs> yeah, it, it took me a second. Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think if you, I don't know if square is, is like, but it is here, square the two plus three. So what do you want me to do as string? Yeah, no, just like the square, the two plus two. I don't know if square is, I don't remember like uh, what's the name of the square root or some 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 function like that do maths. Some, for example, some, if you do just like, <laughs> that's funny, it's exponential here, uh, weirdly. I don't know what that, that what's the calculator? This is e what to I'm, the. Uh, oh, okay. But if you do like, uh, some is maybe easier like. Okay. If you do some, well, do, do, don't like we put a before, comma? before before doing before doing like um yeah no I prefer two plus three. But does it work? Oh okay. Yes, like 
two plus three, like it's gonna be evaluated also. So two plus three at that moment before before being running is an expression. And when you run sum, it needs to be two plus three is gonna be evaluated. That's gonna be replaced. And that gives you an example, uh, an argument for like the sum function. Uh -huh. can, you, can you run that AST on that then? So Olivia, you're saying that it's a two plus three is an expression. It's not gonna evaluate two uh, plus uh, three. Is it Arlong? Yeah, Erlang, uh, uh, yeah. Is it Erlang or Lobsters? I never know which I one is I don't know, it. sorry. No worries. It's Lobster, yeah. Well, because in any function, right? Like if you yeah, give it doing... expression, the argument gets evaluated later. Um, and I think that goes back to some of the earlier chapters with function factories about when the argument gets evaluated. Remember, because we were talking about some of the function factories could get a little yeah. funny, um, depending when that got evaluated. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if, if 2.3 is never evaluated, it's going to stay an expression, no? I don't know. Good. It has to do with the lazy, right? It's like it's, they're yeah. lazy. They don't evaluate it until it's used, and if it's never used, it's never evaluated. But yeah, my, my my understanding is like before, like the function call, it's an expression. That's the function that's make it evaluated. So like here, though, this is being held somehow as an expression. Two plus three is being held in the computer as an expression. Yeah. Yeah. And uh -huh. then plus like is, a, when, is an infix operator with it, like. It's a function, right? Like two plus three yeah. is a function. Mm -hmm. It's a function call. <laughs> it's a function call, yeah. It's a function call, yes. So it's a call. It's a call. Yeah. It's, it's a necessary. call holding two, it's a call holding two, um, oh. two constants. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. but yeah, anyway, that's. Okay. Calls. <laughs> we are okay, next. calls, here we go. Um, so this is like the, the captured function call. Um, and so, you know, I like this AST on, you know, this entire like call to this function read dot table. Um, and so, you know, the first thing here is the function and then the next things are the arguments of the function, which is exactly the same as the previous ones. Um, you know, now, but we're caught, we're talking about that sort of like bigger object. Um, um, one question I had is that this person wrote confusingly type of and string our print language for call objects, but is call returns true. So I was like, what, what would we expect here? Call? Like what? Like type of to return like call. I think what's confusing is the oh. fact that like in quote language but is call like it's it's like you know are there's there's sometimes there's like through history there's so many inconsistencies about like whether something's a symbol or a name and i think they're talking about here the idea is like is is language versus call they mean the same thing but so why are we calling it language why we're not calling it call and so what is a language object i i think language is composed by uh, uh it's probably like there's i don't know i think there's other stuff like just the call in the language Mm -hmm. For example, call, like call is a get... subset of the language. Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, that's my guess. Mm -hmm. And, okay. and then... uh, sometimes, you know, you, you you like for example, like the um, order of operation, it's part of the language also. You know, like you should do uh, uh, multiply first, then plus, etc., etc. Yeah, yeah. So I think all of that is part of the language, and all. And we're going to go uh, straight, so we're going to... Okay, okay, sorry. Keep going. I know I'm, oh, like, yeah. going so slowly today. I'm sorry. No um, okay, so, right. So we can do all these list things to um, to calls. Um, so X, right, is this expression, which is, you know, the, the, the function, but as a call. Um, and we can, um, we can play around with this. So um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I don't know. Oh, that the that the first bit is a symbol. Okay, the first thing is if we look back at our tree, this is the first ob this is the yeah. first item in the list, and then the next item in the list is the you know the next two items are the arguments, and um and so the the symbol is true because that's read dot table that's the name of that function, but then the 
the next pieces are not symbols. They're they're the arguments of the function. So you know, of course, they wouldn't be symbols, but they are. Um, they are a list. I don't know why I put as list. I think they're listening. Anyway. Right now, you see like raw name, uh, raw name equals something. It's it's still not evaluated. Like if right. you go above, like uh, so, at one time raw name is gonna be is not gonna be raw name anymore. It's gonna be false. I mean raw name raw name equal false. Like this is right now. This is raw name equal false. Like right. you see like your line on uh, uh, lobster as ist raw name equal false. Uh huh. But then at one times it will just be false. Like the the argument name will be replaced by its value, like like x yeah. sometimes. Yeah. When you do like. Is it... uh, it's Isn't green table uh, a call here or like Say again? because it's a function? Isn't read dot table a call here because it's uh, it's a function? It's a symbol. It's a symbol. Right the entire read dot table open bracket important CSV comma row dot names equals false. That's the call. That whole yeah. thing. Is the call. But yeah. the read dot table part of the call mm -hmm. is. The Okay. And the argument have not been like, you know, processed. They're still like Yeah. So what if you had a what if you had a what if you created an object called my logical equals false and then in there you put row name equals my logical so that you are pointing to another symbol. <clears throat> and so then what? Sorry? And then go back to that um uh to your to that expression that yeah to that so that copy that oh whole, yes that thing. then you would have multiple symbols in this exactly now change yeah exactly change that to my yeah. logical now let's look and see run that that's what you want right yeah, yeah. but then also run that is is um is I think, why didn't this make a tree second. run it on the expression directly not on oh. the x oh yeah okay 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 this is super silly, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, but it's not. Oh, that's funny. Did you run magical first? Did magical so run? Now, now run te test that is symbol x yes. minus one business. <clears throat> is it double or single? Just one, oh, yeah. sorry, you have too many. No worries. Still too many? Is it just one? <laughs> Wait, but why is Can you it, print X why... first? Let's see what's inside of X and be sure like we are targeting the correct one. Yeah. Uh, so an X minus one, sorry. Let's see. Well, that would be everything, yeah. Oh, we do you want X one? Oh, right, 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 right. One. This is gonna be true. This is gonna be oh. Why is that not true? Check, what, what was the check the code? Make sure that code is what the is what? run. Okay. Oh that wait, we got expression. expression. In the... Right, we're doing. We don't need expression because expression. We, we need is... to remove expression. Yeah. So we're actually and one can... parenthesis at the end. Yes. <laughs> and no. That one isn't relevant, but the fifty-one. Yeah. This one cannot be evaluated. Yeah. That one has to be an expression, the first one. Because right but, now you're trying to open it yeah. to see uh, an important. Yeah, yeah. so this one has to be an expression. So these are still. Yes, but still false. <laughs> but I still don't yeah. know why that's false. So the one, the one so you need double brackets. You have to rerun line 51 with X is assigned to this thing. So. Yeah, at the beginning of 51. Yeah. This is correct. X is assigned, right? So run that, and now let's have a look at it. Okay, wow, what happened? Yeah, you don't need the asked the 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 tree, right? We don't want uh, us to have the but tree. This doesn't. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. So we oh. want to use ask to look at the expression, but it won't. You you want to look at it, but you cannot like. Uh... Okay. Um, Here, I, think... I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> We are so out on your job today. No, 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 no. I'm the one who's going to, this is what we want. There we go. That's what we want. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think I was getting everything confused. No, no, no. All and right. then we can call, 
is symbol I, well, X. No, yeah. no but just, that's still going to say false. That is okay. But even though it's, oops, I'm sorry. We'll leave on the whole thing. Oh, it's a spaghetti, yeah. But that's what? also really odd. The the output of X1 isn't what I would have expected. What's Alese? <laughs> right. Because it's, yeah, it's treating it as a function. Like a list. A... What if, if you said square bracket, square bracket one instead yeah. of just square bracket one? Uh, in the first one, like here, or, or any of them. In both. Yeah, let's see first. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Can you do it on the second one too, just so I can see? Okay, yes. that's interesting. So now let's wait. wait so I don't understand this. So the difference between <gasps> what I mean, it's the idea of like um the name of a list or the container of a list versus like the contents of the list. I feel again this goes back to yeah. The so early, exciting. the one of the early um, chapters. We 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 struggled with that one too. I think at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So I think okay. that line fifty two. Let's do the minus the, the, the minus one being like referring to drawers in a list, and it's like kind of whether or not you like go inside the. That's drawer definitely not going to be symbol. <laughs> Is that what you wanted there? Yeah. That's not going to be a symbol oh, for no, sure. You can't do a negative inside the double brackets. A negative. Yeah, yeah. Double brackets. One, two, three. What if he did three? Yeah, there we go. Up on line fifty-two. Yeah, I'm just switching. I'm not sure if that's okay. Oh. It's true. Yes, yeah. it makes sense. But two should be false, right? Yeah, two it. should be false. <clears throat> okay. Yay! Okay. <laughs> just checking. Wait. So wait. Tell me, why is three true? Because we've because turned it I, into a symbol. This is the my logic, my dot logical. Is a symbol. Line forty-five. Yeah. Right, but it it's this whole thing. Oh, because uh huh, uh huh. Okay. Um, go do line fifty-three and do x square bracket square bracket. Or, or actually, um, you. Okay, and now on line fifty-four, do three as well, and I bet you it'll be named. Wrote, oh, it's not. All right. It's Sorry. a function my logic. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's I was hoping to be named. Because <laughs> wasn't there some example where you could look at it like and it was named by the argument? Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's funny because it's, it's, you call it as a function. Yeah, that's really weird. Okay, we're going to keep moving on. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a lot of what we were talking about, though, yeah. already. The subsetting, and I think we already kind of did all this. You have to turn about... the list. You have that's how it works. You have to say as dot list, and then of, it of this. So if you, um, yeah, if you do that, let's do this first, and then you get all the items that are left over. There we go. And now it's named. Okay, so that was the example. Sorry. Name the list. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I don't think we need to worry about that. Um, but like okay. what the tech is like, it's very hard to use the position mm -hmm. uh, to get to extract stuff because the position can be like it can be assigned by name and it can be assigned by position. Right, and you have dot 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 things that yeah, that complicate and, everything uh, and whatever. Like my deck is like, don't do it. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Here's here's a question for you guys. Um, so the function, where'd it go? Sorry. Oh no, they're just making it up. So so this function is just like there's no function called foo. It's just saying like here, pretend there's a function called foo, and so then it's foo. Um, you know, so we can see that I don't know. Um that it'll still make it a, a, a symbol. But here's what I don't understand. When you add this package or any of these other things, right? Why does the one suddenly go to a different level? I would argue that it's, oh, it totally is on a different level. I think it's because there's two steps. There's one which is getting the foo and one which has the argument. But I agree, I feel like the one should be a nested is... under the package foo. If you rebuild that all of that as an infix function, 
uh, basically what you get is like, first you want to get foo, which is inside of the namespace package, I think. And then uh, what you are passing is like, um, uh, you are passing one. So if you write that, like it's not possible to write that as an infix because I don't think- You oops, can't write it like this? Maybe, yeah, maybe it's gonna work, let's write it. So- But this, I'm not sure what it would be. Uh, open parenthesis, yeah. And package. Yeah, package, the second argument is foo. And then uh, you have another one function that's gonna be well, like- Let's take this outside, wait, hold on. This is what we want, right? And then you have a one also. Yeah. And, and, and then it's 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 right. like just one. Like this, or it's comma the, the one? The, the, the function you are calling is like the a parenthesis function. Yes. No, not not in, in the one, not in um, I don't think it needs to be like, like uh, this. Uh, I think this is I, I'm not sure this is possible to do within is yes, yes. should be something like that. I think um, there's two things that we could try differently. One is to put another parenthesis after foo, like a closing bracket. And now either and just one or one inside brackets. That's right. In brackets or parentheses? Yes. Uh, to me, they're the same, but I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes, the brackets like is. You want, you use the parentheses also to define the function. Yeah. I no, call it's... them brackets and square brackets. <laughs> so. Um, okay, so Olivia, say one more time. So it's yes, like we're running like, this function You miss first. one function, basically, here. You need to to add, a, a, an, I, I don't know if it's possible to do that. Let me see, I, I type it in the chat, but you need this function first. Where? Uh, before your IST. Why? After your IST. After your IST, before the double semicolon. But this... This results exactly in what we what we had before. So you just need another. Now you have like two one here. See, and then like if you look at I, I don't know, it's it's fine. Oh sorry, I think it was like yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's, this is what we should have. No, it's correct. I mean, it's correct. I but just don't understand it. Like I don't understand why that one is like over there. Because one is it's like it's after it's a function. If you do just AST one, uh, AST, but with the, the um, yeah, AST, no, but like in parentheses. Yeah, parentheses. Yeah, I don't know if it's, yes. See? I, I think it has more to do with the fact that they're almost like, uh, it's not a nested function. So the first step is to get what function are we going to run? And then to be then using that function with the the bracketed one bracket right mm -hmm. and just we've never really looked at anything like that where you are like uh, yeah i'm not sure okay i don't have anything to do with the brackets i think it has to do more with the fact that it's like um the first step is to acquire a function and then the other one isn't nested inside that first step it's yeah, parallel you have a first square that's link one to the other object. So you need to evaluate it, the object foo, for example, before getting anything down on one. Right. And that's the same with semicolon. You need to execute first package foo to get the real, like what's happened in foo. Let's say like you have 10 foo. One is package Bob, one is package Bill. You need to have build semicolon foo to know like what's what's the function is. I think I just thought in my, okay, can I try explaining something and see if it makes sense? Sure. <laughs> so if you look at the first square, um, let's on, on that, on that third yeah. diagram on the one at the, the bottom, actually, the, I like the one of uh, the bottom one. So that if that first square indicates that we're dealing with a function, right? Yeah. And then it's usually got a little line going to the right that says the name of the function. Yeah. In this case, it's not the name of a function. It's another function which gets the function. Yes. And that whole little package there represents the pump, the function. Normally, that little line to the right would just be like F. But in mm -hmm. this, it's saying it's a function called foo using the argument one. So that whole little package is the function. And then yeah, this, normally, is, this is a function factories. 
Yeah. The, and then normally the, the next little like bit of a function after the name would be the argument. So the first argument there is yeah. two. Yeah. That make I mean, that's yeah. how I understand it. Like yeah. the, the, the lobster IST open parenthesis foo open parenthesis one, open parenthesis two is basically like you had generated a, a function that's who the one that's take two. Oh. It's a function it, factory. Right. It's a function factory. This yeah. creates a function. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, this okay. Suppose, that makes like, more sense. Yeah, foo, we don't know, but like we should re replace that by a simple function factory later. Yeah. Um, if you run AST on like F bracket one, close bracket, close bracket, like you get, um, just call it F and then get rid of the two. And now just compare that to, if you look like kind of side by side, this is a great way to look at it, right? You can see that F is just being replaced by that new block with foo in one. Mm hmm And that's- This is the function, right. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I feel like I'm shouting at you guys, but I always think my microphone's a little quiet, so- <laughs> We can just turn you down, it's all good. No, I, I'm just joking. <laughs> You're not shouting at all. <laughs> okay, I, this has been really I, helpful, but it, I'm also- recognizing the time um and so and also that I have something at 10 o'clock <laughs> every week um so you know constructing um oh so the next little bit is parsing which is taking strings and and making them into an expression um but I actually found this to not be too too bad it's talking about order of operations and and whatnot and and some um some interesting things to um uh, precedence, like, like you would think that this would say not X, but it doesn't, it says not X and Y, like there's a parenthesis kind of around here in internally. Um, so, uh, anyway, and then there's a really, a really complicated example that, um, that I was going to have you guys walk me through, but I think, I Is think we've gotten a lot out of this chapter. Um, so I maybe just call it a day? Yes, we can call it a day. I will post the link about the Lisp uh, lesson. And I think uh, he gave an, an example with Piglet. I think if we manage to do that, in, I didn't know what Piglet is. But like you're gonna, uh, I'm going to post the link and we can try to do the example in R. And I think if we understand the example of Piglet, he give. And then we do in R, it's the same idea here. That's the recursion that you want to, to use. Okay. Yeah. But thanks, Joe. It was like yeah, super hard. And uh, it's a super hard chapter. It's fine if we do not understand everything. Like it's the first, for a lot of us, it's the first exposition to that. Yeah, so yeah. It's it's normal. So, no, it was good. It was good. This helped me a lot. So I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> Hi. Okay, you're going to type end? Did you type end? Oh, yes. Shoot. Thanks.